good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ramesh. Vishnu and myself are from Flipkart supply chain team. We manage the platform side of things on the supply chain management team. And we are here to talk about real-time analytics, visualization, and complex event processing. So uh, given the large amount of data we process every day in the supply chain management, it becomes highly important to think about real-time analytics and make decisions very quickly. It begins with uh, a warehouse manager looking into his warehouse stock and understanding that I'm actually going to go out of inventory on a particular product. I'll have to buy it quickly so that I go ahead with my future orders. It might also mean that there is a sudden race of a particular book, say, of Chetan Bhagat. And you see that the number of orders for a particular book keep increasing. And you don't have enough inventory of the same. You start pre-ordering to your suppliers so that you can serve future orders of the same. All these boil down to making instantaneous decisions. And that's what we are going to touch upon here. So we started building a system with something like this. Some of you may relate to this with uh, Tom and Jerry's Designs on Jerry episode. So where he builds a really complex system just to drop a safe on Jerry. So we started with something like that and the components These are some of the components which play over there. Starting on the left, you see the application servers on the database servers. And the guy with the log over there is Logstash. That's Graylog, Elasticsearch, Moonin and Graphite. That's Command Line, MySQL, and ActiveMQ. So we'll touch upon the architecture a bit. OK. Starting with this. These are basics. Application server talking to any database. In our case, let's assume it's MySQL. This scales out to n such instances. And when you're actually having applications deployed across hundreds of VMs, it's going to be really difficult to manage your logs, to debug, to also make any understanding out of what's happening in your system. There are five different components with 10 machines in each of its cluster and they want to talk to each other. And you will need to coordinate all that. So how do you actually go about debugging if something is going wrong? You need something like this. We started putting in things one at a time and started transmitting logs from our application servers through Logstash into Greylog. Uh, have any of you heard of Greylog here? OK, I see a few hands. That's good. So it's, you could call it the open source brother of Splunk. It's one of the very esteemed and uh, well-performing ones in the open, sorry, open source logging market. And Elasticsearch is the back end for it. If you look at it earlier, Greylog did not perform well primarily due to its usage of MongoDB as the back end. But once it started using Elasticsearch, things changed. What we started doing with that is, from our application logs, we started stripping out details, stripping, stripping out fields, and making sense of the, them, creating separate fields through Logstash, and saving them in Greylog. Greylog also provides you this wonderful UI where you can do search and search based on a transaction, get all details on a transaction, and stuff like that. So this is a basic setup. Then we introduced StatsD into it. So how many of you know StatsD? Lesser hands. OK. StatsD is this network daemon tool based on Node.js. What it allows you to do is aggregate metrics and send it across to anything. StatsD by default has a backend for graphite that lets you graph whatever details you put onto it. What we additionally did to it was write a backend to StatsD that writes back to Elasticsearch. Why did we do this? We did this primarily to say you have uh, number of orders, number of items per uh, product in my warehouse, and these kind of information going through your logs and from your databases. These are real-time information from your logs. You understand them, interpret them, and graph them. 
but say six months down the line you come back and ask what was my number of orders on this Wednesday and what is my number of orders on this Wednesday I want to compare we won't be able to do that just with StatsD and Graphite we want some place where we can aggregate those information and save it that's where we started writing back to Elasticsearch and we actually open source that particular backend so StatsD writing to Graphite is the default behavior so you'll be able to see all the graphs of as I mentioned the orders or number of items and stuff like that so this setup was working pretty well then we moved on with this so you have a guy who makes queries to Elasticsearch and is able to understand and aggregate information and act upon it so Elasticsearch if you haven't heard of it is the full text based in index database or I should call it no database on alternative to database so it's built on top of uh, Lucene similar to solar but it's like very recent and growing very well so what we started doing is extracting information based on a particular rules starting started to put in queries of it and obtain that information and write back to StatsD again the information goes to graphite and you will be able to interpret and compare data primarily for anomaly detection anomaly detection doesn't happen through automated methods here you will have to see the graphs to understand any anomalies but we need that an automated way Can you? yeah that's when we thought of putting in a complex even processing engine over there this is still a work in progress but we have multiple use cases where this will help us achieve increased productivity so what is the advantage we gain with this we have elastic alternate DB so that gives us queries and faster results primarily because all of the fields we require the fields which are interesting to us like the order ID like the transaction ID they are all indexed and saved already you just need to extract information through structured queries and it's a JSON that's given back to you you can do manipulation with it you can print it out to HTML do whatever you can with it StatsD also has this aggregate of over a sliding time window so you can mention that aggregate my details over uh, a minute I'm not interested in the so we also started logging our exceptions the number of uh, defaults number of uh, errors and stuff like that so I'm not interested in the number of exceptions that my application throws every second but I'm interested in the number of uh, errors that my application throw over a minute and I want to see a trend of it StatsD lets you do that you can define over what interval you want to aggregate you can send that over to graphite you can also define your own backend say you want to write a backend for any complex event processing engine you get the details and send it back to the complex event processing engine and it takes actions accordingly what it could then do is say your number of exceptions are increasing exponentially you write a rule you will be able to integrate it with Nagios or Moonen and be able to alert people so Nagios lets you do this alerting based on SMS email and uh, mobile calls also so we started doing that too okay so what are the use cases you are talking about here let's say an order is placed and you want to know for every order that is placed and confirm you are raising a purchase order for you to procure that item and then to ship it out to the customer a purchase order is raised but due to some anomaly in the system a sales order is not raised this is a problem both in case of your details and also in the case of auditing so these kind of anomalies should be detected at the right beginning and should be uh, taken care of that's one second thing you want to be able to be proactive so a warehouse manager would be interested in knowing my current inventory and what are the products that I am going out of stock of so say a shelf in a warehouse is assigned for a particular product and all my say that product is a mobile phone 
all my mobile phones of say Samsung sit in this shelf or this shelf and if I notice that one of my shelves is going empty or the quantity in it is zero, that's an alarm. I need to either procure more items of it or reassign that shelf to someone else. Where is the current pileup happening? There are multiple systems in a supply chain management. If you think about there is the website which gives you the, which, which is the interface for the customer to place orders. Then there is actually an order management system which manages the orders, sends it across to then the procurement system. There is the procurement system which actually validates the order, procures it, gets it back, puts it in the warehouse. So effectively there is a warehouse system, there is also the shipping system which actually takes your order, ships it out to the customer, gets the cash back and all this. So there is a complete order flow the moment a person says check out my order. And starting from there you want to know how this order has transmitted through your system. You also want to understand if there is any pile up happening. By pile up I mean uh, say the customers are placing orders and there are say 100 orders are placed. There are 100 POs raised. But there are only 10 sales orders that are received or there are only 10 shipments that of this particular item that are shipped out. There is a bottleneck between my procurement and my warehouse. I need to understand and fix it. It could be due to staffing issues, it could be due to some other delays, supplier not giving information, anything of that sort. But the main point is we and also the people managing the warehouse and the suppliers need to understand what's going wrong. Again, SLA being breached. So every order has an SLA. Say you order a book on Flipkart. You are told that you will probably get this book in one day or two days. We effectively tried to meet the best SLA. If we had promised you two days, we pr try and deliver it within a day. And if we see that it's not going to be reaching the customer by two days, we have to take corrective actions for it. Say Bangalore Warehouse has the book, but is not able to ship it in two days. But Delhi Warehouse does not have the book, but will be able to sh ship it in two days. You actually procure a new book in Delhi Warehouse and ship it out. These kind of anomalies and these kind of SLA breaches need to be understood and they need to be acted upon. We also started using our uh, platform primarily for understanding our system's behavior. So we see the request times of each of our controllers or each of the sub URIs in our system and you have the average, minimum and all that. So these are good when you are actually debugging or doing performance tests on your system. You also have, that's not very visible, sorry, but you also have how much time each of my queries took, how much milliseconds, can I improve upon any of those? So we have those information, but how do you make sense of it? As the number of records or the size of your database keeps increasing, you want to understand if your actual system performance is going down. So we started pushing out all those informations through StatsD to Graphite so that even our developers while doing the development understand what's going wrong or is there something they need to do to do better. This is an interface of Greylock. We just have a few snapshots for you. So this is a sample of a particular log. So I'm searching based on a particular transaction ID. If you notice here, the transaction ID is all the same. So I'll be able to trace the flow of an order across my system. I know that the inventory was, the order was created first. The cash on delivery verification was done. Order was approved. PO raised. Inventory received. The next step is for the warehouse to ship it out. We're just waiting on it. Once that is done, we will know that this, this order, this transaction has completed its life cycle and is good. If something in the middle is broken, say the order was never approved but a PO was raised, we will also be able to understand it. So a UI is good, gray log is superb but nothing beats the command line. It's the only thing that lets you scale. So this is what you see when you actually tail logs in a particular system, but what do you do when you have logs sitting in 100 different systems? You can't SSH into each of them and tail your logs. 
or you can't have 100 monitors around you. So what we ended up doing was write a command line tool for it. We query Elasticsearch based on our command line tool and I'll be able to do most of what Greylox provides us on the UI and even more. So what we are actually proud of is this. We'll just be, ta be able to tailor logs across 100 different systems, just like that. You say flow, logs, tail, you just see the logs from all of your 100 systems. You'll also be able to search based on, I want the logs only from this particular system or only this particular cluster or the machines having this particular tag, anything of that sort. This is an example of a verbose output. So each of these you see, the level, the host, the facility, all of these are fields in Elasticsearch which you're actually querying upon and getting details. So this is more explanative than what I can do in my gray log GUI. Sure. So I'll let Vishnu talk about the remaining stuff. Ramesh had explained the particular flow from the, the application logs and how we use Logstash and Graylog to actually an elastic search and graphite to get a better visualization and understand our logs and detect anomalies. Uh, the logs are one source of truth, one source of events from which you can, you know, analyze your data. But sometimes you don't have to trust your logs because some people might forget to log data. So the database has been sitting lonely over here. So let's use the database and we plan to do that. Our database is also a key source of information, right? We store our data there, updates happen, inserts happen. So that's an actual real-time source of truth. Something's getting updated, you, you'll get to know in the database. Sorry. Okay. So the guys at Oracle came out with a library called Change Data Capture. Uh, it helps you read your bin log, which is the log for MySQL which captures all the replication events, like updates, deletes. So we actually use that particular library to read a particular bin log and capture the updates and deletes and inserts, possibly truncates to send an SMS to the sysadmin saying that the table has been truncated. So we actually use the change data capture library to read the bin log, capture the updates and inserts on a particular table or multiple table and also send them to Elasticsearch. So in the context of an orders table, an update happens to the order. Update order, set the status to cancelled. That information, someone might not log. Some might, might miss out that logging. So we can actually use the database to capture such events. And that's how we use the change data capture library. Apart from that, um, we've added one more layer. Uh, we actually worked on pushing the same events from change data capture, the dotted line, to an MQ. We, we get all our replication events in MQ, aggregate them, and we actually send them across to the, a particular slave. In the, so the mo main motivation for that was to speed up replication. As of now, MySQL uses single thread replication. So we, we thought of getting the events ourselves, publishing it into MQ, and then sending it out to a slave for uh, you know, batch processing or batch replication. This is still work in progress, but we, plan, we thought of actually doing that. Uh, and also there's another fork of MySQL called Drizzle. Drizzle has a plugin which actually helps you send out information to RabbitMQ or ZeroMQ, which you can use for uh, replication yourself. So you can set, use that plugin to actually um, replicate to another MySQL instead of using the native MySQL replication. You can batch your replication events and send them out to a slave. So that was the change data capture events to uh, MQ. Oh, sorry. Yep. Now there's another big problem. Um, sometimes a big bad query comes in and it kills the database. Uh, you will not be able to get that particular query unless you put it log it. So the generals, what do we do? We, we enable the general query log. But let's take a system where you're logging like 5,000 queries per second or 10,000 queries per second. The sysadmins are kind of wary of that because disk space will keep reducing and you might not have enough disk space because you're logging at a very high rate. 
So what you can actually do is, you see the line which actually goes out and you see log.cc. Uh, we actually went into the source code and kind of intercepted every query and sent it out to an MQ. So this, the strategy was to actually divide and conquer. You have a, let's say, a 100 gig general log file. So let's try and divide this file up into smaller chunks and distribute it on multiple machines. So we send whatever queries we get in MySQL to an MQ and put an army of subscribers. So what actually happens is all these queries get distributed among those subscribers and you still log out. And since the log is distributed, your space consumption is also less and you don't have to worry about it because my, the actual database is not touched. The disk is used for the database. So that was one motivation for pushing events through MQ. Um, as of now, as I said, Drizzle has that plugin to actually send to an MQ. Um, MySQL doesn't. So we actually went in and um, kind of intercepted each query. And that's the class name, uh, the blog.cc, the file name, which you can go and actually check how your events are coming. So as Ramesh was also pointing out, uh, Elasticsearch, uh, we actually created an index called um, Elephant over there for the conference uh, and actually yeah, sent out events to that. So I'll be sh just showing you a snapshot. Uh, so we have actually an orders, the, on this particular index, we have a table name called orders and we have actually captured inserts which have been sent to that particular index on Elasticsearch. So actually you can go ahead and query Elasticsearch and you'll get the total number of inserts on the order table or the total number of updates. Okay, so this is something which I w we wanted to present. So according to me, every software has a soul. So you often see heroes and heroines singing, you know, crying their heart out. So we thought, okay, MySQL can also sing. So we have a small presentation for you. Uh, we'll actually send a query to MySQL and MySQL will play some music for you. So we'll just demo that. So I'm going to say select star from orders. So what's actually happening is we have sent a query to MySQL. We have an interceptor in the general in the log.cc file which is sending out a message to MQ and we have a subscriber actually playing music. So imagine this is just uh, for fun. MySQL does have a mood so if it's under a lot of pressure it will start crying and producing. So depending on your query if it's a big bad query, you can play a very sad note and let people know that you are treating MySQL very badly. So that was what we had done with this. So just a second before you start your questions, I have a small announcement. There is a grey, sunny uh, Nissan, Nissan sunny car blocking uh, another car. The lady needs to pull out her car immediately to pick up her kids. So if you, if that car belongs to you, please pull it out right now. Questions? Yeah. Uh -huh. Log stage can directly log into Elasticsearch. Uh, why do you need grey log too? Yes, log stash can actually log into Elasticsearch. But the problem with log stash is that once you actually go scale, mm -hmm. the time that takes for the indexes to return the proper query is large. What we are using log stash now as is as a transfer mechanism. The transfer mechanism, the beauty about log stash is that you can provide multiple inputs to it. And you can do multiple different things with it, like a grep or a grog or a STD in, STD out. And that's the primary advantage of Logstash we are using. Uh, and this Elasticsearch, uh, how old data do you keep? Sorry? In Elasticsearch, uh, how old data do you keep? How so many days? The logs which keep flowing in daily, mm. we try to delete it every 30 days. Mm. So we don't try to keep all the data in Elasticsearch after the particular order's life cycle has gone through. 
So Did that answer it's, it's a, it's a dis uh, distributed uh, instance of Elasticsearch or it's a single? Sorry? The Elasticsearch, has, has it been distributed over the over multiple boxes? So right now we are using it over two boxes, over particular five shards. Mm. The default which Greylog provides. Does your application directly logs into StatsD or uh, does it pull it from Elasticsearch? Uh, so there are two types of things we use. So StatsD can accept any information over uh, UDP, but it needs to be in a particular format. You also need the log to be available on a machine for audit purposes. So what we effectively do is have the logs available on the machine and then use STD in and STD out to send it through Logstash. This is more of an add-on, but the logs the application make are primarily required for audit and they'll be saved forever. So you need that. Uh, what is real-time data warehousing here actually over here? Uh, I can't see where you Yep. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. So, what is real-time data warehousing? Like we said, like you, uh, according to the subject area, yeah. I'm not able to. Uh, what is real-time warehousing? <coughs> yeah. You have a. You can say like according to this one, like it's real-time analytics over yeah. here. It's no, a real-time analytics. So, uh, what I'm is real-time analytics over here? What is real-time analytics over here? Yeah. Uh, by which you mean? According to this uh, session over here, it's like build your own real-time analytics and visualization. So what okay. is real-time over here? So what we do is real-time understanding of the order's life cycle, the visualization of the number of orders you have, and important decisions based on that. That's what we meant. Yeah. Uh, what do you use uh, to do your complex event processing and how many are the, uh, what is your EPS that you are hitting in this architecture? Uh, we have started working on the complex event processing very recently. Right now we are using SPER for it. Okay, ja yeah. okay right. And uh, why do you need to do a STD in and STD out when you can just uh, use syslog ng to push your uh, logs to your log stash? Right, you can do that. The advantage with uh, Logstash is that you will be able to strip out particular fields so based uh, on regex. So you, and you be basically able using GROC for that? Sorry? You, you, you basically using GROC, for, uh, Groc uh, for that to remove your filters and the, uh, the fields that you don't want basically? No, no, I didn't understand the question. So uh, what I understand by using Logstash is to remove the unwanted, unwanted fields in your access log. Uh -huh. And uh, why you're using STD in, STD out is to okay. keep the copy of your logs on your application servers. Yes, that's true. The advantage with Logstash I was talking about is you'll be able to add more fields to Greylog. Greylog understands this gel format. It's mm -hmm. called the Greylog extended logging format. Right, right. So what you can do is add additional fields to it apart from the fields which it already right. has. So fields like transaction ID, order ID, uh, product ID, stuff like that which are existing in your logs but the grey log doesn't understand as is. Right. You will be able to strip them out, understand them and send them out as a separate field. And uh, the data that we're talking about over here is all numerical data, is it right? Uh, the data that you're uh, from Elasticsearch pushing uh -huh. to StatsD, okay. so Graphite obviously takes only numer numerical data. Okay. So you're pushing all your numerical data to Graphite uh, okay. for, your, for your trending purpose and then pulling that data back and put pushing into Elasticsearch for so aggregation purposes. The search component you are talking about, right. effectively does uh, queries based on rules you define, hmm. makes calls to Elasticsearch, right. gets details, sends it out to StatsD. Okay. So StatsD transmits the information back to Graphite. Thank you. Last question. Hello. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, see you said the StatsD is used for uh, sliding window queries and aggregates. But the same thing can be done via the CP engine Esper. So why uh, would you actually have both an Esper and also output to a format where Graphite understands? Yes, Esper can do that, but not all of our details are going through Esper. So okay. StatsD, what happens is all our logs and details go through it, and we can define the amount of flush interval on each case. Mm -hmm. Esper, we only use it for particular cases like the use cases I mentioned, the warehouse details, the order details, not all of our details go through Esper. Okay, but technically Esper could do the similar thing what uh, StatsD is doing currently because I mean you are sliding uh, okay. window queries as well as your aggregates. Okay. Uh, could be actually handled by... That's Esper. probably okay. true. I am okay. not completely aware okay. of those details. Uh, you are saying Esper could be used to transmit data to Graphite as well. Yeah, see, as per the, see, you run queries, standing queries on continuous thing, and then mm -hmm. you can output it in a metric timestamp format, exactly. which anyway Graphite understands. So use Java to just transmit over UDP to Graphite. Right, right. Perfect, yes. Okay.
uh, we'll be hanging around if you have any questions yeah thanks